In this session, we're going to look at the if-then-else statement and the conditions behind them. I've set up an index.html file and also a external JS file called functions and linked the index.html to my function script using this line. As long as the two files are in the same folder, it'll work. I'm using Dreamweaver. You can use any text editor you like. The advantage of Dreamweaver is I can use Live View and actually do my coding on this side and actually have my runtime here. But you can easily set it up with a browser and keep refreshing the browser. So let's get underway. I've got some comments in here and I've already declared some variables A, B, C, D to help us. And I've also initialized those variables just to have one, two, three, four, the numbers stored in those. And then I can actually start looking at the if then else statement. So let's talk about the structure of the if then else statement. It starts with the if, and then we open up a brace. And then what we put in here is the condition. So the condition are Boolean operators. Now the Boolean operators we can use, this is for a comment, we can have if A is greater than B, we can also have is A less than B. Now you've got to remember the one on the side of the open bracket is the greater one. So think of the, the bracket as a crocodile and the teeth are going to eat the bigger one. So is A bigger than B? Is A less than B? You can have if A is greater than and equal to B or if A is less than and equal to B. We can see if they're both the same, if A is equal equal to B. So if A and B are the same, you can also have absolute, which is A equal 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 B, which means they must be the exact same ASCII character. Otherwise, you can also have the not equal to, where A is not equal to B. So this gives you all your different conditions that you can have in this bracket here and then we can open up the brace part and say well if it is true do the following thing what's between these two braces so this is known as the then part but if this condition and I'll just write the word condition in here at a moment if the condition is not true then we do the else part we open up a brace again and then close the brace so it all resides off this boolean condition here so it's either going to result a true or a false. If it's true, we do the then part in here. So this is the then part or the true. And if it's not true, it does the else part, which is the false part. So depending on the condition, it will do the true or the false. So let's change this condition over. Let's see if A is equal to B. So is A, which has one in it, equal to B, which is two? Then we want alert true. Otherwise, if it's not, if A is not equal to B, I want the computer to tell us or alert us that it's false, which means we're in the else part of the statement. Now we know that A is equal to one, and we know that B is equal to two. That means they're not the same, which means it should actually alert for us false. Let's test our program. And it's come up false. So let's make A and B the same. Let's make B equal to one. So A is one and B is one. So now our program should actually alert true because these two can, this condition is now true. Now we have true. If I put this back to two, if A is greater than B, which should result back false because one is not greater than two. But we can also check if A is less than or equal to B. Now because A is one and B is two, it is smaller, so it results back the true part of this. So that's how we can actually get these to work. If we want to use the not equal to, is A not equal to B? And we run the program again, it results back true because A and B are not the same numbers. So this allows us to perform an if then else statement and use the different types of parameters or Boolean tests to check the result. So what if we want to check two things? We want to see if 
A and B are the same. Or if A is equal to something and B is equal to something. So let's check that. Let's see if A is equal equal to 1 and B is equal equal to 2. Let's run the program now. It's resulted back true. Both A and B are equal to 2. But what if A is 2 here? Is A 2 and B 2? Let's run the program again. It's returned false because A is not 2, A is equal to 1. So this is how we can actually do what are called or dual condition using the end statement. So A and B, both conditions need to be true for it to go through. If one is false or the other is false. So let's change this one here to 1 and A back to 1 and run the program, we end up with false again. So both conditions have to be true in the end part. If we use the OR statement, which is shift and above the enter key, the two what are called pipes, if we use those, if A is one or B is one, it should result true, which it has done, because we know that A is one at the moment and B is two, but as long as with an OR statement, if this is true or this is true, it will execute the true part. But once again, if they're both wrong, so A is 3, we then up with the false part. So that's how we can use the end statement, the OR statement, and use the conditions in an if-then-else statement.